Uh, page 114, chapter 5. Because this was a special occasion, Henry didn't use Fleeso. He used his mother's shampoo. Ribsy whimpered. Henry rubbed the shampoo on and worked it into a thick lather. He rubbed and scrubbed the suds foam thick and white until Ribsy, except for his face, was hidden in mounds of thick lather. Now you ought to be good and clean, said Henry. He scooped up handfuls of water from the tub and poured them over the dog. He poured and poured, but the lather only grew thicker. If only he hadn't used so much shampoo. He tried mopping Ribsy with a washcloth. That helped, but it still wasn't fast enough. He had an idea. He moved Ribsy around so that he faced the end of the tub and turned the shower on. Ribsy tried to jump out, but Henry held him. Ribsy raised his head and howled. Henry, his mother called, what are you doing to that poor dog? Just washing him, answered Henry, and turned off the shower. Ribsy shook himself. Henry used four bath towels on him, but still he wasn't dry. Oh well, it's a warm day. Maybe the sun will dry him off, thought Henry. We took one of the towels and hastily wiped it over the floor and tub. Henry, I have to go downtown this morning. I hope you and Ribsy have good luck at the dog show. Mrs. Huggins had her hat on, ready to leave. Thanks, Mom. Say, have you seen the leash? It says on the entry blank, all dogs must be on a leash. I think you left it in the basement, Mrs. Huggins said as she went out. Henry ran down to the basement. At the bottom of the stairs, he found the leash. At least it had been a leash, leash once. Now it was chewed into half a dozen pieces. Henry looked hurriedly around for something to use in its place. If only he had more time. The only time he could find, sorry, the only thing he could find was his mother's rainy day clothesline. After climbing up on an apple box to untie it, he ran upstairs and fastened it on the end of Ribsy's collar. It was longer than a leash, but it would have to do. When Henry went on the front porch, he saw Beezus and Ramona coming down the street. Beezus was carrying a squirming black puppy that kept licking her face. Puddles, you stop that, she commanded and set him on the sidewalk. Puddles was wearing a red bow on his collar and Henry was pleased to see that Ribsy wasn't the only dog with a rope for a leash. Come on, Henry, we better hurry, said Beezus. Ribsy sniffed at the puppy and decided to ignore him. Hey, look, exclaimed Henry. There's Mary Jane and Patsy and Robert and Sassy up there ahead. We'd better run. When they reached the park, Henry saw that already there were hundreds of boys and girls and dogs there ahead of them. Henry had never seen so many dogs. There were Boxers, Great Danes, Pekingese, Airedales, Cockers, St. Bernards, Pomeranians, Beagles, Setters, Pointers, and just plain dogs. Some, like Puddles, were were wearing ribbons on their collars, some wore sweaters, some had on little paper hats. A loudspeaker on a sound truck blared out, Take your entry blanks to the registration desk by the tennis courts. Come on, Ribsy. Henry found his way through the crowds of children and dogs to the registration desk. There he waited in line to weigh Ribsy on a big scale. At first, Ribsy didn't want to be weighed, but Henry and a boy, Scout, managed to shove him onto the scale and keep him still long enough to see that he weighed 28 pounds. You've grown a lot heavier in a year, said Henry. Maybe we should have called you Ribsy anymore. After the dog was weighed, a lady gave Henry a yellow cardboard armband. It had Woofie's dog food. Woofie's made dogs woof for joy printed on it. Below that there was a space for a kind of dog weight class and the ring in which the dog was to be shown. The lady wrote on it, mixed breed, 25 to 40 pounds. Ring three, Henry led Ribsy toward a sign with ring three printed on it over by a flower bed. Ribsy stopped to shake himself then before Henry knew what was happening. He dashed over to the flower bed and rolled in the dirt. Hey, cut it out, yelled Henry. You're getting all dirty. It was too late. Henry pulled Ribsy, streaked with mud, out of the flowers. Henry tried to brush off the dirt. Then he tried to rub it off with a handkerchief. He only smeared it. He was discouraged. Why had he bragged so much about his dog? Now he would never win a prize. When Henry reached ring three, he saw that it was made of rope tied to four stakes driven into the ground. Instead was a pole piled with the prizes Henry had read about. 
Henry looked at the silver cup and thought it would look nice on his dresser. Not that he had a chance with a muddy dog. He noticed some of the boys had brought brushes and were brushing their dogs. He wished he had thought of a, to bring a brush. The day was warm. Henry sat down on the grass with the rest of the boys and girls to wait for the judging to start. He kept trying to brush some of the dirt off Ribsy. In the ring next to his, he saw a snow white dog. Somebody said it was a Siberian sled dog. The dog's owner was brushing him and sprinkling white powder on him to make him look even whiter. Henry had an idea. If he only had time, he could run home for a can of talcum powder to sprinkle on the white parts of Ribsy. That would cover up the dirt. It didn't matter about the yellow and the black and the brown parts. The dirt didn't show there that much. Just then, the voice boomed over the loudspeaker. We are going to postpone the judging for a little while because we have a real treat for all you kids. Maud, the train mule is going to entertain you. The children are started towards the truck to see Maud. That is all except Henry. He was not interested in any train mule. He wanted Ribsy to win a silver cup. Here was his chance. He could run home and back while Maud the mule performed. Come on, Ribsy, he yelled. We have to step on it. Followed by Ribsy, he ran as fast as he could out of the park and up the hill to his house on Clickitack Street. He rushed into his room and snatched his hairbrush. He tore into the bathroom and grabbed a can of talcum powder. Then he rushed back to the park with Ribsy. The children were still crowded around Maud. Henry was so hot and sticky that he had to sit down on the grass to catch his breath. Ribsy was panting and his tongue hung out. Henry brushed him with a hairbrush. That helped a little. Then he sprinkled on the big white spot on his back. Henry was horrified. He could scarcely believe what he saw. The talcum powder wasn't white, it was pink. Who ever heard of a dog with a pink spots? Quickly, he tried to brush the powder off, but Ribsy was still down and the powder didn't brush off. Henry decided to make all of Ribsy's white parts pink so they would match. Maybe in the bright sunshine, the judges wouldn't notice. He sprinkled powder on Ribsy's white ear and left hind paw. He even sprinkled it on his white tail. Yes, Ribsy did look better with all his light parts matching. Maybe the judges would wear dark glasses. Maud finished her act and the children came back to the rings with their dogs. Hey, look at the pink dog, a boy exclaimed. I never heard of a pink dog, a girl said. What kind is he? He's a mixed breed, said Henry. He put the talcum powder can in his pocket and decided not to say anything about it. Maybe the others would think he had some kind of rare breed of dog. A man stood in the center of the ring. Henry noticed that he was not wearing dark glasses. All right, the man called. Bring your dogs into the ring and march them around in single file. Come on, Ribsy. They're going to start judging. You better behave yourself. Henry led by the clothesline into the ring. The children walked their dogs around in the circle. Ribsy's long rope tangled with the other dog's leashes. Finally, the judge directed them to stop. Now get your dogs ready, he ordered. Henry didn't know what he meant, so he watched the others. Some of them knelt by their dogs and made them stand still and look ahead. That must be what the judges meant. Henry knelt beside Ribsy. Ribsy sat down. He opened his mouth and let his long pink tongue hang out. He was thirsty. Come on, Ribs, stand up, begged Henry. Be a good dog. Ribsy began to pant. Come on, get up. Ribsy lay down on the grass and panted harder. <laughs> Henry pulled and tugged. He looked over at his shoulder at the judge. The judge was looking up the ears and the teeth of a dog that was standing properly. Then he ran his hands over the dog. The dog didn't move. Come on, Ribsy, begged Henry. It'll be our turn pretty soon. Ribsy closed his eyes. I know you're thirsty. I'll get you a drink of water just as soon as I can. The loudspeaker made an announcement. Will the Boy Scouts please take pans of water to each ring? Henry was relieved to see a Boy Scout coming with water. But when Ribsy's turn came, he sniffed at the pan and refused to drink. I guess he's used to his own dishes, exclaimed Henry. He just doesn't want to use the same pan as the other dogs. Can't help it, said the Boy Scout. It's the only one I have. Ribsy continued to pant. At last, the judge came to Henry. Well, well, a pink dog, he exclaimed. Yes, sir, said Henry. It was lucky his own green hair had grown out so he could be cut off. A green-haired boy and a pale pink dog would have looked funny. Come on, son, stand him up. Henry boosted Ribsy to his feet. 
Ribsy tried to sit down again, but Henry held up his hind end by the leg. The judge looked at his ears and teeth. Then he ran his hands over him. He looked at his fingers afterwards. They were pink. Hmm, he said.